the things that we know, the things that we know we don't know, but then also the things we don't know that we don't know, right? So there's an awful lot of things that are happening in and around the supply chain that it needs to know about and it needs to know about in, in, in real time so that it can react, so that it can behave appropriately given the requirements of customers and consumers. Um, Network certainly this idea of collaboration, this idea of um, of, of, of cloud-based commerce networks, um, and, and always on, right? I mean, I I have I have two, like 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 well, sorry, I have two teenage boys at home. They can't quite understand the concept of not always being able to access their favorite sites, always being able to find the things that they want online. Um, I talk about uh, a lot in my research about this notion of resiliency in four Ws, and it's a it's a bit of an inside joke because I haven't come up with a clever W for regulation yet. Um, but from a supply chain perspective, right, it's about the impact of weather, it's the impact of, of, of social uh, and, and, and culture, it's about you know the role for workers, and, and also as we start to see a much more globalized supply chain, the notion of regulation and the requirements uh, on the supply chain of regulation. Omnichannel certainly, you know, manufacturing supply chains are increasingly being asked to look a bit like retail supply chains. Retail supply chains are being asked to look a bit like manufacturing supply chains. So we see this blurring of lines. We see this notion of, of omnichannel. Um, and, and then I think it's about understanding. I mean, I'm a, I'm a supply chain guy, first and foremost, have been for 30 plus years. Um, I always think it in terms of you know, what's the supply chain problem that we're trying to solve with the technology. But there's also an opportunity there, right? There are also things that, that those technologies, all of the technologies that we've heard about today, there are things that those technologies can allow us to do potentially that we couldn't do before. So, so we not only need to think about the supply chain in terms of Solving problems with technology, but also those opportunities that uh, the technology can provide. Um, you know, why now? You know, when I when I work with clients, the, you know, the question that we always explore is this idea: of, okay, you know, why now? What's so special about now? Um, and I think that um, in manufacturing, we're seeing a lot of lots. A couple of folks mentioned it before. Um, it was the folks from Weepro that we're seeing had a very strong from the side. Uh, I, I work with a consumer products manufacturer, and in discussions of their supply chain, they are seeing that, that they are losing share to small, old, completely native competitors. It's not to the traditional. So um, the why now really is that for many of these companies, if they don't change the way that they compete, the, you know, the, the point before about uh, you know, more than 50 percent of the S&P 500 companies have disappeared since 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 year 2000. You know, don't don't want to be one of those in 15 more years, and so we have to start to adapt. We have to start to think differently about business, and that requires thinking differently about about this budget. Um, so, so I, I talk about this notion of a, it's a bit of a mouthful, but I talk about this notion of a, of a sort of digitally enabled thinking supply chain. Um, and, and just some of the things that potentially the thinking supply chain can do, these actually are all things, all questions that we got through the inquiries from various entrepreneurs over the last, last year. Um, the capabilities that perhaps they can't do today, but that they should be able to do and need to be able to do in the future. Uh, and I, I won't read that through them all, other than to sort of suggest that it's about um, perhaps running the supply chain in terms of, of not having to intervene, right? Having it run from a cognitive perspective. So as long as things happen within certain line constraints. You don't have to have people involved in the supply chain can just kind of run itself. Um, whether it's about sort of rerouting inventory dynamically, there was one customer we were dealing with who was having trouble with uh, with with forecast uh, forecast and demand sensing, and so they looked at possibly uh, rerouting inventory in transit. Um, uh, couldn't do it today, but maybe they can do it. Maybe they can do it tomorrow. Or um, you know, thinking about assets inventory shipments. And through through true end-to-end -end real time uh, tracking and optimization. Again, we're starting to be able to do that today. We're starting to see companies that do it today. But we really we really think in the future that's going to be a basic requirement. Um, and, and so so I've I've sort of I've developed this notion 
uh, of, a, of a 5C supply chain. Um, I kind of like alliteration uh, as this part. So, um, and these are the parts. So we just, um, but it's this idea of um, you know, sensing, analyzing, responding, you know, connected with IoT, using sensors of the supply chain to connect things that perhaps have not been connected before. Um, certainly this idea of comprehensive analytics, turning that, that information, that data, you know, the, 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 the common yeah. core about, you know, less than 1% of data gets used. Probably a bit better than that in the supply chain, but not a whole lot better than that. There's an awful lot of data supply chains get that they don't use. Um, and so taking that data, making sure that it's analyzed in a comprehensive way, um, it, enabling it cognitively again, so that if, if in fact something has to happen in real time, there are systems that are able to think through that and act on their own. They don't require what may be great limiting control to be involved in the process. Um, needs to be collaborative, certainly. Um, a lot of that is starting to be through these um, cloud-based commerce networks, um, but certainly collaborating with suppliers and with, uh, and with customers and potentially even with consumers. Uh, and, and, then, and then being cyber aware, um, that there's, a, there's a customer that the manufacturer I work with who said to me just recently that um, cybersecurity has actually become more of a concern for their supply chain than like physical security. Not that physical security isn't so important, but they kind of understand what physical physical security means for their supply chain. They don't understand necessarily what what cybersecurity means. So um, I'm certainly not a cybersecurity expert, but it's something that, from a supply chain perspective, uh, is an important consideration as we move into the future and as we move into some of these. Cognitively enabled systems. Um, so, so just just in terms of those five things, um, briefly, um, you, you, you can read you can read the statistics as easily as I can. I think the, the more important point here is this idea of an analytics gap, right? So this is my sort of uh, classic uh, North American term that I was called my copy stick chart, but um, but it's this idea that over time data is increasing rapidly whether it's uh, IoT data, social data, or even traditional ERP data. Um, the point is not so much that the data is increasing. I think we all know that. The point is that for many supply chains, the analytics capabilities are not keeping pace. So we have this growing analytics gap. Um, and, and that's the concern that, that I hear for most supply chains, is that as we become more and more connected, um, we're falling further and further behind in terms of being able to utilize that data. So, uh, being connected with IoT um, is, is, is critically important, but it's also about making sure then that we have the right analytics capabilities to keep up with that growth of data. Um, and, and again, uh, you know, lots of lots of numbers. Um, I, I think the broader point here, though, is that we're increasingly seeing data as digital capital. We're increasingly seeing data as critical to the survival of the supply chain. There's a um, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, company, um, Under Armour, in, in, in California, in the United States, uh, and they have historically sold um, sports clothing. Um, but they are moving rapidly into the health data business, right? So they put sensors into, into some, of their, some of their clothes. Some of the sneaker manufacturers are starting to put sensors into the, into the shoes that can start to capture health information and make recommendations about uh, health without diet. Um, and so this company, Under Armour, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, a decade from now they become known more as a health company than as a sports clothing company. So, um, and, and the supply chain is central to that capability. You know, collaborative networks, um, I, I, I made the point uh, in, in my predictions for the supply chain last year. Um, oh. They'll be expected uh, by the end of this year to see close to 95% of manufacturers using these collaborative networks in some, some place in their supply chain. We'll see a lot of it in procurement. Uh, we're also seeing some of it in service networks. We're seeing some of it in uh, manufacturing networks. Uh, we're even seeing some of it in, in logistics and transportation networks. Um, and, and, we're, and we're seeing um, 
and, and you see some of the some of the points here from from a, from a couple of inspectors about you know, point to point relationships are, set, are simply too slow, um, or you know the connections available to us in commerce networks have allowed us to recover more quickly from supply chain disruptions. So this idea of collaborative networks and being collaborative in the supply chain, you know, I often joke that. Um, the term collaboration is in the top 10 full of fame of overused supply chain terms, right? We've been talking about it for a very long time. But I think we've been talking about it because it is so important. And it is really important, we think, as we move forward into the future of the supply chain, that supply chains be collaborative, probably through these commerce networks. Not exclusively through them, but, but, but through them in, 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 uh, in great part. Um, you know, again, you know, cybersecurity, as as, um, as as one of my IDC colleagues always observes, and I, I always like the way he phrases it. Phrases it. Um, you know, digital transformation in the supply chain kind of expands the attack surface for cyber intrusions. Um, and, and I'm not going to suggest that the supply chain will become the top target for cyber criminals. But it certainly increases the exposure as we move to, you know, you know, to think about um, you know, all of the factories and perhaps somebody has a grievance based on a product experience with a particular manufacturer and finds a way to shut down the factory for a day. That would cost the company many, many thousands of dollars. Um, so um, cyber awareness, I think, we're starting to hear more and more from chief supply chain officers. We're starting to hear more and more from factory operators. I think it's an important component of how we're going to think about the supply chains, particularly as we move to this notion of a thinking uh, of cognitively enabled supply chain. Um, so again, uh, cognitively enabled. So, so I had that chart before uh, where I showed the, the, the sort of volumes of data going up, and there was, a, there was an analytics gap. Um, there's actually a second gap that I'm increasingly hearing from manufacturers and, and talking about, which is kind of an attention gap, right? So companies, as they invest in analytics capabilities, are going to have enormous amounts of insights available to them, many of them in real time. Um, and are there enough people in the supply chain to actually act on them uh, in, in, in real time, right? Like they have a colleague of mine who uh, well, I've known for many, many years who, who worked for a large consumer goods company in, in, uh, in the US, always used to say to me, he said, you know, if we take the time uh, and, and spend the time and money to invest in a piece of data in real time, but we then don't make a decision on it in real time, that investment is wasted. And so um, as, as we improve the analytics capabilities, as companies close those analytics gaps, they do, I think, run the risk of having this attention gap, which is there simply aren't enough eyeballs in the supply chain, or human brain simply isn't fast enough to process all of these insights in real time and make uh, the proper decision. And so we start to see at least a role for cognitive technologies, a role for artificial intelligence in um, moving to this idea of a thinking supply chain that can. That can that can just think on its own. They can learn from the past, whether it's logistics shipment based on weather data, whether it's um, how to think differently about factory run strategies. In, in, in real time, all things that we think uh, cognitive technologies uh, can help can help to enable. Um, so, so I, I think as I uh, as I close out here, um, I just wanted to talk quickly about uh, some of the kinds of benefits that we. Are starting to see in the supply chain from the use of digital technologies. They are, um, it, it's, it's early days still, certainly, um, but these are, these are some, some, some numbers um, from, from folks that we work with uh, based on um, different kinds of digital enablement in the supply chain. Um, certainly, down in the right corner, there's one company who um, says that they're actually dramatically improving recovery time from uh, from supply chain disruptions uh, in a couple of cases as much as by 50%. So if something goes wrong in the supply chain, instead of being down for four weeks, maybe I'm only down for two weeks. So instead of being down for four days, maybe I'm, maybe I'm only down for, for two days. Um, we're, we're certainly seeing through um, digital um, uh, capabilities and technologies and fulfillment and inventory visibility that we're getting improved service delivery by two or three percentage points. 
um, particularly in kind of last mile uh, delivery, where that's been problematic for many years based on lack of inventory visibility. So we're seeing certainly the ability to reduce by two or three percentage points, not percent, percentage points. So that's 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 quite material. Um, more effective product innovation. There, there's um, there, there's a company that I, that I work with who believe that by 70% of their annual revenue is going to come from products that were less than three years old. So they're going to have to dramatically improve their innovation process, both in terms of number of products through the innovation funnel, as well as the consistency and regularity of those products. Um, and, we, and we certainly think that um, um, the digitization of the development process potentially, um, the ability to capture past learnings and, and, and apply those to new products, um, can, um, can reduce systemic uh, costs by um, uh, as much as 10%, but more importantly, actually reduce the amount of time it takes to bring these new products to market by even as much as So, um, some, some fairly significant potential improvements, we think, that can improve the supply chain as we move sort of you know from this analog supply chain in this interim period to ultimately this digitally enabled supply chain. Um, so I thank you for your attention. I know that was a blisteringly fast run through um, the, the future of the supply chain. Happy to entertain any questions, uh, any outside during the during dinner if you have any, but I thank you for your time. I thank you for your attention.